uh, dear and distinguished ministers, it will be a pleasure to uh, ask you your vision. I will just introduce in, uh, in uh, some several words uh, because I want to uh, testimony to our uh, first uh, messages from uh, the Prime Minister of Estonia, who spoke about the necessity to demonstrate, I, t I quote the words, the strong cooperation between the three Baltic countries and also the neighbours. And this is uh, very much about a cross-border uh, project, and we are very glad to have also Sweden, because Sweden is, of course, a neighbour. We have Poland, Sweden, we uh, will speak about the role of for Finnish uh, partners also of uh, this uh, project. And with, and with um, Sweden, we speak about, and Finland, about the extension to the north of this uh, capacity of two corridors, the Scandinavian one and the uh, North Sea Baltic one. So the um, Violeta Bolsch, the commissioner, uh, spoke also about uh, the fact that we have to demonstrate European values to connect growth for jobs and our economies through connected markets, to have uh, social and economical benefits. It um, shows that um, about the uh, Rail Baltica project, it's not just about rail or machines. It's much more. It's a way to live, to diminish the distance between people, between markets, and to have also a very strong input for innovation. But a project is also a way to build it through women and men who have responsibility in decision. The decision making, the timetable, is also very important in such a project. And we hope together that this project can be an example for cross-border projects in Europe because we think that with the SEF instruments, we can take uh, this project as a sort of uh, reference which can be an international reference through the success of the project and through the method of organization and also of cooperation. So this is a very strong issues, uh, issues which have a national impact, but also a European impact. And we think that through this cooperation you represented um, today uh, on this uh, panel, uh, we will have a sort of booster the booster is also uh, the will, the decision, the trust, the confidence uh, in the capacity the cooperation will give. So I will just ask uh, a question for the beginning uh, to the five uh, ministers, like an uh, introduction. What are the most important benefits of Rail Baltica for the region, in your view, for the five of you? Uh, in five minutes, too, uh, can I ask Mrs. Kadri Simpson to begin with her vision? Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Dear colleagues, uh, dear distinguished guests and um, participants, first of all, um, I'm very pleased to be right here right now because I'm, I have been looking forward for this conference and I think that it is very useful that uh, annually we have this kind of um, meetings. Meeting. Of course, we, we, in, um, in previous days and previous weeks and months, we have had also a very fruitful bilateral meetings with all my colleagues. And uh, this only shows that we have pretty good cooperation already and we can um, fulfill this in upcoming years. But, um, I'm also uh, glad that we have here business community because it is very important for us to see that um, here is a strong interest from uh, business side because it is our job to facilitate the latest information regarding the project de development. And in this regard, I want to highlight the activities of Rail Baltica Business Network, mediating direct contacts. And this is, um, this is crucial because otherwise we don't know for whom we are building this kind of um, fast railway connection to Europe. But of course, um, as previous speakers already mentioned, right now in our region we do have bottleneck. We don't have fast connection, railway, existing railway connection towards Europe. And for that reason, the Rail Baltica project is, um, is a flagship project for us. Uh, it will uh, bring European rail gauge to the Baltic states, and not only the Baltic states, but of course uh, 
from our point of view, we don't see that the final stop is here in Tallinn or in yeah. Muga. But um, for us, very important is uh, the partnership with Finland. And as, um, as uh, Commissioner Violeta Pulci also mentioned, for us it is very important that the, this future railway enables also multimodality. Because um, right now we do, we, we do use different modes of transport. And um, this rail politic project um, creates a completely new economic corridor. We all know that it uh, offers in the future waste possibilities to the stakeholders and to the countries in question. And in, um, in this matter, once again, it is only, it's not only for uh, three Baltic states. Um, it is crucial that Poland and Finland are all also involved. And in, that, in this matter, not only Finland, but Sweden. And uh, I'm very happy to see my Finnish colleague here too. And, um, and to keep the Finns interested, we, we have to work um, together to uh, project stronger Arctic dimension um, by extending the existing North Sea Baltic Corridor to the north of Finland. And um, well, this brings us uh, in absolutely new dimension of um, flow of um, cargo and so on. So I'm very happy that we already have existing cooperation with Finns and Poles. But, um, but for our aim is that uh, both Finland and Poland will become um, full members of Rail Baltic Joint Venture. Um, because involvement of five member states, it will make um, Rail Baltic a real European project. And in that matter, um, we should work further for that. And um, to conclude my short remarks, a couple of weeks ago I had very good um, meetings with my Polish colleagues in Warsaw. And we can see that in Poland, we have already, um, we already have seen uh, significant investments to the rail Baltic line from uh, Warsaw towards Lithuania. And uh, only the final link is uh, not still under question how to fin finance it. But uh, this is a um, very encouraging development that we have seen in previous years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for this uh, 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 inspired uh, vision of the project. And um, I will let you uh, please uh, continue on your vision and your uh, contribution, the way you, you see uh, the benefits of this project for your country. Yeah. Uh... Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Trautmann, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to say that I have great honor and pleasure that the second Rail Baltic Second Forum has convened so many people from different countries. This shows that Rail Baltic project is a significant project at the international level and it continues its development. I want to remark that on the 20th of March in Riga, uh, the first um, uh, uh, in the Baltics, uh, pro project design, um, uh, project about the railway station at the International Airport, Riga. Riga International Airport. This shows that the project is maturing, that now we are moving over from the planning phase to the project design phase. In my opinion, Rail Baltica is not the biggest um, uh, project in the Baltics in 100 years, but it is a major step for the further integration of the Baltic states in the EU. The project is also an opportunity for the development of the region because it um, ensures access to this region um, by greater mobility of people. As it is shown, transport infrastructure development has always been significant for the um, economic uses of the country's potential. 
thanking to the cooperation of the Baltic states and the EU political and financial support, Rail Baltic project implementation will ensure that we will not be simply an isolated island in the railway transport. We will become one part of the integral railway system in the EU, and we will become one uh, very significant partner in moving passengers and cargoes not only east to west, but also north to south. It is a very complicated project, and therefore it is necessary that the involved countries should cooperate to the best of their possibilities so that the project becomes the highest priority project, and it will emphasize this impact of this project for the transport corridor, um, North Sea, Baltic countries, and the southern direction. I'm very happy to see the participants from Sweden, from Finland, and other countries, which shows us very positive opportunities for the project. Point you, you mentioned about uh, the integration, European integration and also uh, be part of the uh, European network for transport, for freight, and for passengers. This is, uh, of course, a big issue. And um, I ask Mr. Rokas Masulis now, what is your vision, Mr. Minister, of the benefits for your country and, and all of the zone? Uh, thank you, Mr. Outman. It's, uh, first of all, uh, uh, I'm welcoming all participants of this forum, uh, my colleague ministers, I guess from Poland and, uh, and Sweden. This is uh, uh, a, a, very, a very important event. I'm very happy that it is uh, happening in Tallinn. Uh, Tallinn is a very hospital city, a town of uh, vision and bravery. Uh, many good things uh, came out of Estonia, uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. This project is uh, uh, progressing well, I would say progressing well. I'm very happy with the cooperation between the Baltic states. Uh, first of all, I would like to concur with Ms. Simpson on uh, uh, Finland and Poland. This project is, does not go only for three Baltic states, but without uh, Polish connection, uh, without Poland on board, it would not use uh, full potential. And with additional potential, which we see in Finland for the future, especially with potential of northern route opening up, this can be a game changer for the region. So Lithuania has been calling already all countries participant in this project to start already pushing as much as we can goods and services, goods and, goods and cargo on already existing Russian gauge to start practicing how this uh, Rail Baltica uh, line would be operating. And uh, I'm very glad that three Baltic states agreed to open up, uh, continue an amber train through Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia as a good starting point and warm up for, for Real Baltica, for Real Baltica operations. Project is very big and very long long, uh, not only in years that it will be built, now we are planning 26, which is far away, but also in distance. Yesterday we were walking uh, in t-shirts in Vilnius, <laughs> and tonight uh, I saw snow falling from the sky in, uh, in Tallinn. It seems uh, only less, or just an hour to fly from Vilnius to Tallinn, but uh, temperature difference is almost 20 degrees. So, of course, it's not uh, usually like this, but yeah. it, it shows a picture that there is a certain distance between our capitals. So project is complicated, and we need even better cooperation among ourselves. Uh, better cooperation always grows in trust 
uh, among each other. If we trust each other, we'll be able to achieve more. Uh, we have good, good examples of cooperation between uh, Baltic states and energy sector. I was blessed with an opportunity to, to serve in the energy sector before becoming a transportation minister. And uh, we have examples of uh, gas market, a single gas market for Baltic states. We have example of a single electricity market, not only for Baltic states, but as well of, uh, of Nordic countries. Uh, which shows that when we sit at the table and we're looking for a solution, we always, always find a solution how to operate our infrastructure smoothly without obstacles and uh, to perfection. Uh, we were able to come up with solution in uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, electricity um, integration, ele electrical uh, power integration into European grid synchronization project, which is also a mega complicated project for, for Baltic states, and we're very, very close to solution. Uh, also, uh, also in Lithuania, we have come through the project uh, proce process of um, large infrastructure projects, starting from LNG terminal, then coming to to cable to Sweden, and then uh, overhead how high voltage power line to Poland. So we and all those projects were completed on time, and what is important on budget as well. So it's an intense. Intense, intense preparation, uh, which would lay a very good ground for a real Baltica project. And I'm very happy what we were able in Lithuania to attract the same people who were able to complete those challenging projects in Lithuania to our real company to work on real Baltica. So I'm very happy that the best, the best of the pack are, uh, are available to service this project. So uh, I still still believe that a better better coordination for the project is uh, possible. We have uh, worked more closely, and uh, as Ms. Simpson said, to integrate into the project Finns and Poles as well. So it was already mentioned by Ms. Rubesa that we need to figure for Poland what would happen if Poland would be on a statistical list. Uh, I would encourage for the next time also to have the same slides, including Baltic states, but adding up uh, Poland and uh, maybe Finland as well. Uh, especially for Lithuania, Poland is extremely, extremely important partner, and I, I believe that those figures will be very interesting, very interesting, because there is a very intense, intense uh, traveling between Lithuania, Lithuania and Poland. One important aspect which I have to mention is military mobility. We live in, uh, in difficult times, and military mobility through Baltic states is at the utmost importance on the list of all three Baltic states, as well as Poland. So this project has to, has to include potential for swift, fast, and efficient military mobility as well. But, but, cost is very, very important. Cost is extremely important. In all large, in all mega project, cost management is of extreme importance. Of ex we should save every penny. Where we are able to save a penny, we have to save a penny. It is very, very, very important. We have to be very greedy when we fight for the funds but very frugal when we spend our money. Because this is, at the end, this is our money. This is European funds, European money, and we are part of Europe as well. But also, another part comes from our own budget, so we need to count and be very, very frugal in, 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 in this project. Also, 
it must be noted uh, that EU support and EU help uh, and keeping up a support uh, support at the same level as it is now is at the utmost importance. Reducing it would harm would harm directly the project. I believe so. For Lithuania, very important is Vilnius link. Vilnius link must be stressed uh, here that in Lithuania is a topic number one. When I come to Parliament, every time they ask me where is where is Vilnius link, it was already agreed that Vilnius link is a, a part of Real Baltic project. Where it is. I'm telling everything is okay, we, we, we have all agreements in place, but people, you know, people asking, where is the money? It's a, it's a, it's a natural question, which I receive all, all the time. So I have to, I, I have to put it, put it here. Thank you. So uh, probably this is the most, most important aspects and uh, the most of all, important of all is cooperation. Cooperation, cooperation, cooperation and trust among three Baltic states, as well as Finland and Poland. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister. In fact, you, you said very important things about cooperation. You said it three times, <laughs> and also a trust. When I began my work of, uh, of a coordinator, I said to my counterparts that uh, the first difficulty was trust, always in cooperation. I am also from a border region, between Germany, Switzerland, uh, and now uh, the, with the extension of this region, Belgium and, and Luxembourg. So uh, cooperation with neighbors is a sort of art, but it's also a way to innovate, and I'm sure to find solutions, because there are excellent uh, complementarity between the three Baltic and also common visions on some topics. And I'm very glad as coordinator to see that Trust is going and in growing uh, constantly, and I hope that it will continue. But also that uh, for uh, issues like multimodality, as Kadri said, or like um, digitalization, security, uh, and uh, the transfer from, from road to rail, uh, the three Baltic are very much engaged, and Poland also on security field as I could see. So that's why we have some uh, uh, flagship projects about energy, uh, which is very important for alternative uh, sources of energy. And the rail is a way to do so, about also um, the, um, uh, the security safety uh, on um, transport. And for uh, the uh, travelers, of course, this is a key issue. And there is a flagship on, on this uh, topic. And of course, there is also uh, what was said uh, about uh, the uh, services, mobility as a service for the population, which is uh, a very big issue. So for Poland, I will uh, come back with a very specific question after, after, afterwards, but uh, I would like to listen to, uh, to you because Poland made a tremendous uh, path to come in as a very uh, strong partner and convinced partner uh, for the uh, Rail Baltica. So how do you see now, what is your vision in Poland? Thank you very much, uh, Director, ladies and gentlemen, Honourable um, representatives of uh, EU, I am very glad that I can uh, participate in this conference for the th second time. It is an honour and uh, pleasure to take part in such an event in which uh, very um, interesting topics are discussed. The Polish government uh, views this project from the point of view of the transport cohesion in the EU which also forms um, and is included in the key policy of Poland. Our priority is to create uh, favorable conditions for transit, um, for tra transit ro routes um, north, north, south, east, west, and Rail Baltica inscribes and is included in this project perfectly well. I am aware that the Rail Baltica project is a 
very important element of the economic economic development of all our countries. We also we're also talking about it that the. Um, Sweden and Finland are all engaging in this project, which also proves that this pro there is an interest um, about this project, which also proves that there is a potential. The potential is also exemplified and proved by the presence of people of business. I also know that we are realizing a huge investment project, uh, 67 billion Polish lotis with uh, EU co-funding, and we also know that we need the engagement of uh, contractors in Poland, but also in there are this need, these needs in other places in Europe. Hence, this um, economic growth is very important for the for the rail building project. It has to be emphasized, and I thank you for this word, that uh, we are a partner that implements this project in Poland, because our engagement and involvement is very crucial and important. And maybe in the second part of the discussion, I could discuss it in more details. In this, I will just um, make this small remark now. Railway transport is very important for us uh, for, sustain for to implement sustainability. And it's also an instrument uh, to reverse the transport in Europe and create a competitive transport to road transport, uh, which is also very important from the ecology point of view. And the Prime Minister also devoted the, some time to this issue, and I would like to follow his steps. Of course, we will, we want, and we will un, uh, engage in, in the project of connecting Europe, in which we could get co-financing for Rail Baltica project, because we know this priority for us, and it's also a priority for our for our neighbor neighboring countries and the Baltic states, and and I also think that now it will also become a priority for both for Finland and Sweden. I would also like to emphasize uh, something that was already mentioned by the minister, Mr. Minister, that we also have a very important um, circumstance here uh, that we also need to consider safety. And this aspect needs to ta be taken into consideration and it has to be discussed. And also we have to reconfirm that Rail Baltica is a very important project in this matter. Thank you very much. Dziękuję serdecznie, panie Bitel. The ministers, of course, they are timid, you know, they are <laughs> cautious about uh, expressions. So now um, we we have the pleasure to have your presence, Mr. B Mr. Um, Langan, and um, Sweden uh, is, uh, of course, on the other side, if I can say, of the of the sea, but so near of the, of the uh, Rail Baltica. I, I speak about two loops. One loop is the maritime loop between ports and cooperation of the Baltic ports is something which is tremendously vivid and important. And we know that ports give the entrance to the European markets. And for business people, this is uh, a crucial issue for the logistic chain. But there is also the terrestrial loop, which is, in fact, the complementarity between the maritime uh, aspects and, and the land aspects. So it's very important to see and to listen to you how you see the benefits of the Rail Baltica from your perspective. Well, thank you so much, Catherine. And uh, let me just first take this opportunity to, to congratulate uh, the 100 years of anniversary. It's uh, truly amazing and I'm truly honored for being here today. And um, there is a very good question that you put out there, Catherine. And uh, for Sweden, Swedish government, the, the uh, Rail Baltic project is very important. And as far as I see it, it's relevant in many, many aspects and, uh, and several different levels. There's a clear European dimension to it, a regional dimension. 
on the national dimension. That, that, that is really, really clear. And I think we all can agree that the function of the single market is dependent on transport. It's very important, and well-functioned transports and uh, connectivity across the European Union is necessary for a well-functioned single market, and we are very much in favor of the single market, of course. And Ray Baltica is an important and absolutely vital part in the completion of the single market for the European Union and for the function of the single market, but also for the Baltic region and the Baltic Sea region, of course. Efficient uh, facilities in the Baltic Sea region for transport of goods and passengers are important for job creation and trade in the whole region, as the Prime Minister pointed out in his opening remarks. And Rail Baltica contribute to both these schools, and a perfect example, I would say. Uh, modern electrified railway is, in my view, an effective contribution also to the climate challenge that we all face here. And the uh, implementation of cross-border infrastructure and transport facilities requires engaged and constructive multi-level cooperation between the member states concerned. I would say that uh, the three Baltic states are a role model for not only my country, for the whole European Union to show that cooperation is truly, truly necessary and something that is very achievable. And you have proven that, I would say. Uh, and therefore, we support the efforts from the European uh, coordinators and the cooperation of the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region to improve the accessibility between our countries and the rest of Europe. And I think that is uh, the basic line. Uh, we need to integrate Europe in a better way, and this Royal Baltic project is one perfect example. Especially when we live in this... Um, um, how do you say, uh, uh, political um, change landscape uh, now, it's very important yeah. that we integrate uh, the European Union and integrate in a very efficient way, and uh, World Baltic is such an example. Thank you, thank you very much um, for this um, uh, strong words about the exemplarity uh, of this uh, project. Um, we spoke about uh, military mobility and about cohesion. Uh, there is a link between these uh, two uh, aspects. It is solidarity between the Baltic states, the neighbors uh, of the Baltic states, and it's very important to show in the moment, uh, and I think we have it in mind, that through this infrastructure, we show something which is very peaceful, but very strong that is determination and cooperation to succeed in this new infrastructure, which will be useful for citizens, but useful also for a peaceful uh, situation in these countries. So this is not only uh, a task for uh, the uh, Baltic states and the neighbors, it is a common will and a common issue for all Europe. And I must say this very strongly. That's why I'm very glad to come back to Mr. Bittel about uh, this uh, special work on the uh, Polish territory uh, with the link um, to uh, Lithuania. And um, you uh, spoke about it. And this is a very uh, typical example of the progress we could have. So can you, can you uh, come in, uh, Mr. Bittel, about uh, the uh, situation today? Yes, thank you very much for the possibility of uh, commenting on this matter in a nutshell. What is the state of progress when it comes to Rail Baltica in Poland? Last year, we completed the modernization uh, of Warsaw uh, Sadowne section. We've already done that. Uh, Sadowne Czyżew and Czyżew Białystok. Uh, this section uh, is already in our plans. Um, we will have co financing from Connecting Europe facility. We plan to complete it in 2020. Ełk Białystok, Białystok Ełk uh, completion in 2023. On condition, we receive co financing in the competition in uh, which we are participating. And the last section, Ełk uh, Trakiszki, the one that is the most debated point on our 
implementation map. Well, here we already announced a tender and we concluded a contract for feasibility study. We prepare documenta documentation with different options, different speeds, different courses, and depending on the option that is chosen, the implementation will either be easier or much more difficult also because of the requirements uh, related to environmental protection. So these are the things that are going on right now. We are already implementing some works, uh, either uh, working on the project or in the field. And we are following the uh, agenda towards modernization of rail uh, Baltica up to the border with Lithuania. It needs saying that Rail Baltica uh, is also uh, something that supports our vision, our vision, which we uh, call the Central Communication Hub. And here we say that railway is going to be a center of this challenge. We need to modernize railway to make sure uh, that uh, we will be able uh, to reach this hub within two, three hours from the biggest agglomerations in Poland. Of course, depending on the uh, speed, depending of, on uh, the offer of the carrier. So this requires investments in rolling stock. So there's going to, a lot is going to happen in Poland in the nearest future. And we hope uh, that we will have good cooperation with our friends from the European Union also in terms of financing, co-financing, because it's our common goal and common business. So because it will result in the fact that the policy of sustainable transport development uh, will exist even more in Central Europe. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much for this uh, presentation of the progress, uh, which gives uh, reality uh, to the connection uh, between uh, Bialystok to Kaunas. And this is very important because in the moment we discuss also how we can solve uh, the question of the existing line and uh, the evolution of new parts uh, of the line to have the correct uh, design uh, for the for the rail Baltica. So um, we 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 understand that uh, all the countries wait for uh, the continuity of of the of the financial support. This is a very strong political issue, and I was so glad to listen to Mr. Ratas, the Prime Minister, with such an engagement to support the CEF instrument because we can show with this uh, project that the CEF instrument is really useful and we must be sure also that uh, with the exemplarity of the Rail Baltica we can continue with the next period of financial perspectives because of course when we begin we must finish. And for the taxpayers this will be a key issue. They want to see in reality what <laughs> is uh, concretely this project they will use so timetable and the uh, time frame is so important. We must not have delays. We must also show that through this cooperation, we can find new solutions. So this is, um, of course, very uh, important. And one of the uh, arguments we use as coordinators, because we have two cross-border projects, which are really more advanced than some others in time, it is the Rail Baltica and the Brenner. So we know that we can finish in 2027. So this is very important to stay and to stand on this uh, timetable. We need to uh, show that it's possible. So do you think, it's a question to all ministers, uh, how the Rail Baltica can be a, cross, a model for other cross-border projects uh, in Yewu? <clears throat> and how do you see the place of innovation? As coordinator, I say very often that uh, to be an economical uh, corridor, we need to show also how innovation can uh, be uh, implemented and deployed uh, in all the corridor. To, in the long distance, the long uh, effect, and if it, the project is long and complicated, we need also to show uh, the concrete uh, results we can have through innovation and through this exemplarity. And we need also um, 
to know how will rail Baltica influence the future of mobility uh, in the Baltic Sea era. Can I ask in two minutes to each minister to give an input uh, to these questions or an answer? Kadri, you want to begin? Yes, thank you. Catherine, I can only agree that this is crucial for rail political projects that the um, EU funding will continue. And that's why we have to explain also for um, uh, EU citizens why it is important. Well, first of all, right now this is um, the reason that we are in the territory where we don't have existing fast railway connection to yeah. Europe. And this is not only Estonia, but also our northern neighbors. Yeah. So um, if we keep in mind that um, each year we see growing numbers of uh, cargo, but it goes to our roads, then um, Rail Politica as a rail connection helps us also fulfill the targets that we have accepted in um, climate and energy field. So uh, basically, each train helps us to remove from uh, our roads 50 um, trucks. And everyone who has traveled in previous years in Via Baltica, which is current road, sees how congested it is by trucks. So this is the first thing we can fulfill several criteria, and one of them is that rail connection is uh, just so much more uh, environmentally friendly uh, way for, for transportation. Another thing what I personally um, uh, believe that it is important is our good cooperation with, uh, also with our northern neighbors. A couple of, day ago, couple of days ago, I had a chance to participate in a similar panel, but the topic was tunnel, tunnel between Tallinn and Helsinki, and we can't seriously discuss about that without existing rail politic. Of course, we have already uh, um, ferry um, passengers, nine million each year, but um, but this actually brings, uh, Rail Baltica actually brings Europe closer to Finland too. So I do believe that this is important. But basically, right now we have bottleneck. Estonia doesn't have fast railway connection. And we can't seriously talk about uh, free movement of uh, trade and goods if we don't have connection. And um, this is base of the European Union. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, answer. Very clear. And Uldis, uh, do you agree, do you complete uh, what Kadri said? Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, what was mentioned by other colleagues uh, in connection with the Rail Baltic project, I think it is very important within the framework of this project that we will manage to um, uh, avert this um, break between uh, the uh, transportation of cargoes due to this discrepancy today that we see. I think that it is very difficult for project designers and technical people uh, to uh, visualize for, itself, for themselves the vision of 2027, because uh, in my pocket today I have a mobile phone, uh, which uh, 10 years ago was just a telephone. Today it is already a computer. So I think by 2027 uh, we will have quite a different picture in the technological development. The colleague mentioned the involvement of Finland and probably the future vision of the tunnel. Uh, uh, probably it would be a very innovative project in, in order to connect not only Baltic states to the to Finland and um, Nordic countries by sea, probably it will be a connection by tunnel. This will certainly improve the mobility and increase the mobility. Mrs. Rubes also mentioned about how fast people could travel and reach the capital cities of the Baltic states and how very much the time spent on the road or on the trip will be reduced. I think it will be very, very um, good in the future because we would be able to strategically use this mobility possibility. 
uh, because uh, uh, it really leave, uh, lift the burden from the road uh, onto the train, and we will see that the new gauge, uh, railway gauge, uh, will uh, bridge the gap uh, because we see that these uh, possibilities for transport are sort of disrupted because of the differences um, uh, that exist today between the Western Europe and the Baltic states currently. I think that uh, our everyday life has picked up momentum and will continue to do so. Therefore, I think Rail Baltica will be very essential. It will improve not only uh, transportation of cargoes, but also the strategic uh, transportation, so to say, increase the military mobility, which is uh, essential. We have to understand and we have to explain these things to our populations, to our communities in our respective countries, so that the people uh, he have impression about the tangible results we will reach. Thank you. Uh, answer, uh, also uh, very engaged and, 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 and very uh, clear. And uh, the way you insist on the, uh, to improve transport of cargoes, which is the common uh, the common um, vision, I think, of the, uh, all the ministers here, uh, you expressed it. Um, can, can I give the floor to Okas <laughs> now? Thank you. Uh, it's very difficult to predict the future. Uh, yeah. And we all know from uh, historical experience that large projects, including infrastructure projects, start attracting different sorts of things which were not foreseen uh, before. Yeah. There is a saying, expect and expect it. I believe the same will go for Real Baltica. Uh, many things which will happen after Real Baltica will be built probably were not in, on our thoughts today. Uh, we, can, uh, we can look, uh, at least in Lithuania, we have uh, experience. For example, we have dredged a uh, few meters in Klaipeda Harbor. We have uh, different ships coming in, we have different businesses building in, we have different business chains building in, production, and so on and so forth. We have built an LNG terminal, suddenly we have a, a, a LNG uh, a cluster in Claypad University, which already has today two uh, projects, uh, engineering new projects developed uh, based on LNG and already implemented in, in practice. In, in the industry, we have a pipeline of the project, pro, products uh, already. Actually, one of the projects uh, is in the rail industry. Uh, our railway company, together with LNG cluster, is developing a LNG run locomotive, which mm -hmm. has to be finished in two years. We will see uh, how it will be used in practice. Uh, also, we have started uh, widening up and uh, developing Via Baltica uh, road in Lithuania, and suddenly this year we're already accounting uh, foreign uh, trucks in larger numbers than local trucks, which has never been foreseen before. So infrastructure attracts businesses, attracts people, and changes uh, habits. Yeah, I believe in Lithuania, habits of traveling will be changed to some extent with Rail Baltica too. Lithuania has a very low penetration of uh, rail passengers uh, so far, even compared to Latvia and Estonia, it's a small number. But we see speed, uh, speed of train being increased uh, between Kaunas and Vilnius, between Vilnius and Klaipeda, even it's not a significant speed increase, but it, uh, a significant increase in passenger number. Mm. So I would uh, uh, look for something unexpected as well happening when we'll build the Rail Baltica for new things to come, new technologies, uh, always trust in people. People find ways around uh, how to utilize new technologies, how to invent, develop, and, and find the ways around. And our country is uh, blessed with talented people. So I believe that this opportunity will not be missed. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. You spoke about the attractivity for business and, and people. I think uh, uh, if we are uh, on, the, on the track of the figures, this is uh, Robesa uh, could show before, uh, we, we can be uh, a bit confident in the, in the future. And um, I think that um, the reality can sometimes give some surprise. It was my experience also. Because, uh, you know, at first, uh, about the TGV I know well, uh, even the uh, national company, the SNC, have said to me there is a cross-border effect. This was a cross-border negative effect because we were supposed to lose any uh, uh, progress of uh, passengers, you know? And the demonstration was the contrary. We had a cross-border effect, but very positive. And then, in the two countries, the people wanted the same capacity and the same performance. And that's why it's the chance for the Ray Baltica, I think. It's to have the unique, uh, you know, parameters and coordination through all the projects so, so that the uh, impact is the same for the three countries and for the neighbors. So what do you think uh, from Poland, <laughs> from your side? Of course, um, but keeping the same parameters between the countries, the, the par parameters connected with uh, infrastructures that are offered by um, providers are, of course, very important because they boost the offer and they also make the railway more competitive towards other modes of transport. And this involvement in order to make this pro project, Project Rail Baltica, to be common is very important and this is the direction that we should go. Because this way we can integrate in the trade and also the exchange of thoughts because the trains are used also by passengers who carry thoughts and their ideas to other parts of Europe so that our awareness in Europe is higher. And this is, of course, very important. For that end, it is very important to use new technologies and reach solutions so that in the longer perspective would bring economic effects and results, but also would ease the um, natural environment. It's also very important, um, the technologies are important that will increase the safety of passengers and cargo. We also have to take, this in, take that into consideration. Maybe I can praise myself and ourselves, but we also concluded um, one of the tenders uh, and we will be implementing GSMR. And some people say and argue that this technology is not going to be developed, but so far this is the best. And when we have this hard infrastructure, that the soft infrastructure is going to be um, accustomed to that. And thank you very much for the support of the European Union in the, in the implementation of this project. We also have to take into account the rolling stock. We think about railway um, in terms, um, in complex terms, as a com comprehensive terms. And uh, within one project, uh, we want to, within the partnership, with the partnership of manufacturers and the service providers, we would like to uh, in increase the know-how uh, that will be used by not only by our neighbors, but it will be produced in Poland, but also in cooperation uh, with other companies. This is a direction that makes the railway the carrier of the development and also the basis for the development. And this is the direction that we, we, go, we would like to go. And the Rail Baltic project is one of the, uh, these projects. Thank you uh, very much uh, for this uh, uh, answer, very uh, clear too. Uh, Mr. Lamgaard, uh, Sweden is a model on the uh, climate change. I see uh, also the big uh, engagement of uh, several Swedish cities and competences 
on innovation. So what is your um, evolution and projects in the railway network in Sweden? Well, thank you very much for the question, Catherine. And let me say by this, I mean, we all know when it comes to infrastructure, there's a large amount of money involved. You almost get blind of the figures than you see on the budget sheet. Now, I think there's four main points or four main topics that you have to be aware of in order to gain acceptance from the public also to, when you do these large infrastructure projects. You need to do the project on time. And you need to do it on budget. And another thing is that you need to, when you're building it, you need to have a minimum breach of the environment. And fourth, and not the least, you need to have good working condition for the, for the workers uh, involved in this. And all this add together, then you can actually, when, the, when it comes to the public procurement process, raise uh, conditions to meet these four criteria that is uh, needed. And then also we drive the innovation of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of new techniques and so on to become more environmentally friendly and so on to get, gain the new techniques which we, all the ministers here has been talking about. And this is how you do it, I think, when you have this large, large investment. Because, I mean, the companies, they are here. They are here up for the race, of course, and they need also to be innovative. But we, when we, when we procure this, we need to set the, 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 the conditions. And in addition to that, for example, right now in Sweden, we are, uh, we are, disc uh, we are about to uh, make a government decision for the next planning period for the 12 years. And, uh, the next planning period will we decide what will be built in Sweden. And I have a budget about approximately 622.5 billion Swedish kronor. I think that's about 65 billion euros roughly, uh, given exchange rate. And now, after we have decided with projects that should be built, we're also thinking of how we should do this in an innovative way, in an innovative probable procurement, because we need to, 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 to collaborate with the businesses, with the academia, so, and so on, in order, in order to uh, uh, face and fight the climate change, and so on. So we need, for example, to have uh, environmental friendly concrete when we build the roads uh, on the tracks, and so on. So this is how you combine a lot of um, of uh, good examples into the infrastructure uh, projects and also gain the public's trust and the public's commitment to this. But then again, as I said, the four points, you need to meet them. You need to do it in time, you need to do it on budget, you need to make sure that you don't uh, um, breach too much of the environment and you need to have good uh, working condition for the workers. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, um, this is um, your four points, are key points. And um, from uh, Poland, through the three Baltic, with Sweden, I let the floor to Kadri to go to Finland because uh, she said at the beginning we uh, want to uh, put uh, Finland in as Poland. And uh, we hope so in the Commission. I can say it because, of course, the success will be for the five countries and the six, <laughs> of course, uh, with, with uh, Sweden and then the other ne neighbor, neighbor countries. So, Kadri, how do you, how do you see uh, the uh, evolution? The, um, uh, what is your wish uh, for the uh, uh, involvement of uh, Finland in the project as a sort of model also of uh, bilateral cooperation you have? Yes, Catherine, here we share your position that it would be great if Finland and Poland would be more connected and more involved in our joint venture. And definitely this is one task that we have to fulfill in upcoming years. From our side, uh, well, in the beginning of May, we will have joint uh, governmental session with our Finnish counterparts. And definitely one of the topics will also be uh, rail politica. Um, it is also because of that, that if, the, if it would be a project of five EU countries, it would uh, make our task for next EU financial period easier. As Catherine mentioned, there are two flagship projects, uh, Brenner Tunnel and Rail Baltic. And well, if we um, well if we compare us with Brenner Tunnel, then 
in the 80s when Brennan Tunnel already had first visibility study. Well, here in Baltic states, we still made a human chain or Baltic chain and didn't um, dream yes. about uh, European gauge uh, railway. So uh, we, have, we have kept a very good pace. Um, we have shown a very good cooperation, I do believe. And um, together, we, we have to fulfill the target that by 2026, it is possible to travel by train to Riga and Vilnius and Warsaw and so on. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I think we can applaud all the ministers for their strong engagement. <laughs> and um, I can say that uh, if they spoke before about talentious people, we need them uh, for the organization, for the implementation of the project. We need also very engaged and talentuous ministers, and you are. So I thank you very much, because of course for the coordinator, the support, the political support of the ministers and the governments is so important, and for the commission, because now it's not so easy. And for Erald Reuters here present, for my collaborator and advisor, uh, Vera Kisler, we have a strong battle about money, you know? Everything is also about money, and the business people in the room, they know that they need also to go to uh, some uh, uh, com possibilities, procurements, and they wait for it because they want to work. We spoke about growth and jobs. It's the companies present in the room. So, um, you can be confident. We are ready to go. We will not forget any of the capital cities. <laughs> so, all the capital cities will be uh, connected. And uh, please, you understood, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen from the companies, that this is a very precious opportunity. You are present for that, to listen uh, to this uh, positive message. And we have to transfer this message to all the citizens, because of course, it's also for them, for their trust in the project that we are here in this round table, and good luck to the ministers, because they have also to uh, give uh, this uh, good news uh, to their population. Thank you very much for you, for your presence, for your work, and for your support. Thank you.